Hello, welcome to lab at SMU. In this video, we're going to go over some of the equipment that you'll be using this semester. First, let's look at our thermometers. We have two different kinds of thermometers. We have one that reads from 0 to 50, one that reads from about minus 20 to 100. We have a barometer which will give us the pressure in the laboratory. We have some measurement equipment. We've got a graduated cylinder, a beaker, an Erlenmeyer flask, a pipette with an auto pipetter, and a burette. I have the burette and a burette clamp. One thing that we'll learn as we go through the semester, that when a burette is upside down, so the tip is up, and the stopcock is open, so the stopcock is parallel with the barrel of the burette, that signifies a clean burette. And before we leave lab, we always want to clean it, flip it, open the stopcock. Some other equipment that we'll be using here. Uh, we've got some clamps. This one is for a test tube clamp. It's a larger uh, clamp that will fit a larger diameter uh, piece of equipment, such as a test tube, a smaller diameter clamp that will hold a thermometer. We have a ring stand with a ring and gauze that we can set a beaker on, a Bunsen burner, and a striker to light our Bunsen burner. And lastly, I'll introduce this piece of equipment called an auto dispenser. The first set of equipment that we're going to learn how to read properly are the thermometers. The first thermometer on the left is from minus 20 to 110 degrees Celsius. If you'll look carefully, the smallest marking is one degree Celsius. So we're going to estimate to the next digit, which is the tenths. When you want to read the thermometer, you'll want to get at eye level, and sometimes it's helpful to put a piece of white paper behind it. Let's read this one. I'm reading this thermometer at 19.8 degrees Celsius. The other thermometer that we have here is from about 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. The smallest markings on this thermometer is 0 0.1 degrees Celsius. So we'll read to the closest 0 0.1 and then estimate to the hundredth. This is the barometer that we'll be using in lab. We'll be reading the middle scale, which is the red scale, and that records in millimeters of mercury. The smallest division in this scale is one millimeter of mercury. So let's read it. This one is between 750 and 760, and again, I'm just counting the smallest uh, divisions and it looks like it's between 755 and 756. So we're going to read to the 755 and estimate to the tenth. So the reading from this barometer is 755.6 millimeters of mercury. That will have four significant figures in this value.
We're in the balance room now. We're going to do two different kinds of weighings. The first is sometimes you just want the mass of a piece of equipment. And what we'll do first is we will shut all the doors of the balance, make sure they're shut, and make sure the scale reads zero. If it does not, you can press the zero button. Then we'll open up one of the doors, place our piece of equipment on the scale, and close the doors. And then we will read and record all the digits displayed on the balance. The next type of weighing that we'll do is sometimes we'll have a solid um, that we don't want to put directly on the weigh uh, pan, but we need to first put it on a piece of weigh paper. But we'll need to tear the weigh paper, which essentially is subtracting the weight of the weigh paper. So again, we'll make sure all of our doors are closed, press delete or zero. And good technique is first fold your weigh paper in half and then in half again. So that when you open it up, it does not lie flat. We'll open up the door and we'll place our piece of weigh paper on the balance pan. And this is how much the paper weighs and we're going to tear that out or subtract that value. And so we hit the tear button and now our scale reads zero. I can open up the door and spoon some of the solid that I will be using onto the weigh paper, close the door, and we can read the balance. When you're ready to take it out, it's a very easy thing to do now that we've folded our weigh paper. The solid has fallen into the center, and we can easily grab it by a corner and then put it in uh, the vessel that we need to put it in. Be sure when you're done to cap all containers that you have used. The next piece of equipment that we'll use is the Bunsen burner. There are two parts to the Bunsen burner. There is the gas flow and that is controlled by the knob at the bottom and there is the airflow, and that is controlled by turning the barrel of the Bunsen burner. Uh, we want to have a blue flame, which is a hot flame, very clean, and we will like to have a large cone of blue and usually a smaller cone of blue within it. There should be no yellow in that flame. The first thing we're going to do before we even start to light it is we want to turn everything off first. The easiest one is the air. And if you'll look down on the Bunsen burner, we're going to turn that clockwise. OK? Uh, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Now, with the gas flow, this is opposite because it's a flammable substance. We will be turning that left and we've shut everything off. Now we want to open both the air, one full turn, and the gas, one full turn. We'll hook it into our gas supply line. I'm not going to turn it on yet because I want to show you the striker. There's a flint in here and you need to be sure that you have at least a good spark. We'll turn the gas on 
and you want it completely parallel with uh, the nozzle here. And sometimes I'll listen for it and I can hear that there is gas flow there. Okay, it's on. This is not a good flame. It's too much yellow and it's kind of high. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to adjust the height of the flame. And that seems to be a pretty good height. And then we'll turn the barrel, giving it a little bit more oxygen until we have a large blue flame with a blue cone inside. When you're done with the Bunsen burner, turn it off at the source. The next piece of equipment that we'll be using is a burette. When a burette is in the burette clamp upside down so that the tip is up and the stopcock is open or it's parallel with the barrel, this signifies a clean burette. However, before you use a burette, you'll need to normalize it. And that means coating the entire inside surface with the solution that you'll be using. So let's do that. To remove the to remo remove the burette, uh, first hold the burette and then pinch the clamp together and remove it. There are three parts to the burette, the barrel, the tip, and the stopcock. When the stopcock is parallel with the barrel, liquid can flow through. When it's perpendicular, nothing can flow through and it's shut off. So we're going to shut the stopcock off and we're going to add a little bit of the solution that we're going to be using, maybe five or 10 milliliters. The amount is really not important. And you'll want to roll the burette tipping it all different kinds of ways so that the entire inside surface of that barrel is coated with the solution that we're going to be using. When we're done, since this is just water, I can put it to the drain. We'll open the stopcock and let everything flow through the stopcock and the tip of the burette so that those surfaces are coated with the solution that we'll be using too. We'll close the stopcock and put it back in the burette clamp. And then I'll put a burette funnel in. I've got some DI water in a beaker and we are going to be filling up our burette. I like to fill it a little over the zero mark and sometimes it's helpful to put a piece of paper behind it and the readings kind of jump out at you. I'll fill it above the zero mark and then I'll drain it to below the zero mark and we'll read it. Next, I'll bring the meniscus between the zero and the one Actually, it doesn't matter where you bring it to, just as long as, as it's below the zero. And by doing so, I have the stopcock and the tip coated again with our solution. Now let's read this burette. The smallest division here is 0.1 milliliters. So that means we need to estimate to the hundredth. So there should be two digits 
after every reading on this burette. Another thing, uh, this is a 50 milliliter burette, but we're just going to read the value here. We're not going to do any subtracting from 50. Again, it's very helpful if you put a piece of white paper behind the burette, the readings tend to pop out. And if you're a little shorter like I am, feel free to stand on the uh, stool. You'll want to read at the bottom of the meniscus. And I am reading this. Uh, again, it's in tenths, and I'm going to estimate to the hundredths. And it's, I'm reading at point 0 0.60 milliliters. The next piece of equipment we're going to be using is the pipette. The pipette also has a barrel, and above the wider part of the barrel, there is a marking. When the meniscus is on that marking, the bottom of the meniscus, you have dispensed 10.00 milliliters. We'll be using the pipette in conjunction with an auto pipetter. We'll gently put the auto pipetter on top, and when we want to draw up liquid, we can use the thumb screw. We'll also need to normalize this pipette before we use it. And that means rinsing the surface, the inside surface of the pipette, with the solution we're going to be using. And how we do that is you'll just draw up liquid above the marking on the barrel. And then either uh, there's a lever or a, the top you can push down or you can even remove the auto pipetter. These pipettes, uh, you may still see a little bit on the inside. They are calibrated to deliver. So as long as your uh, bottom of the meniscus is on the mark, you have dispensed 10.00. So we've just normalized our pipette. Now we're going to draw it up again. Be sure you don't draw it up so that liquid gets into the auto pipetter. That can ruin the auto pipetter and your experiment. And we're going to go above the marking on the barrel. Lift the tip of the pipette out of the solution and then you can press down on the top so that the bottom of the meniscus, again at eye level, is on that mark and now you've dispensed 10.00 milliliters of solution. The last piece of equipment that we'll be introducing today is the auto dispenser. This is very similar to the pipette where it will deliver a specific volume of solution for you. To do this, I've calibrated this one to deliver 50.0 milliliters. You'll gently lift up on the barrel. Sometimes a drop of waste will come here and that will go in your waste beaker. And then you'll put the piece of equipment that you want to deliver your solution to. In this case, it's an Erlenmeyer flask. And gently press down on the barrel. And you have 50.0, three sig figs, milliliters of solution in your Erlenmeyer flask. <laughs>